My guest this segment is Robert Cheney. He's the CEO of C21 Investments, trading on the CSE under the symbol CXXI. Robert, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me on. Yeah, sure. Robert, let's uh, start with an overview. What is the business model of C21 Investments? C21 is a consumer packaged goods uh, company in the CBD and cannabis space. Our operations currently are primarily in the United States, in uh, Nevada, where we're the number one uh, vertically integrated operator in the state. And uh, we have a very large uh, vertically integrated operation in Oregon uh, with one of the strongest wholesale uh, distribution networks of any state in the U.S. currently. Okay, interesting. I see you recently closed a bot deal financing uh, for $45 million uh, in con convertible debentures. So are you primarily then just a uh, passive investor or are you operating these projects? Yeah, we're only a, an owner operator. So we uh, acquire existing profitable businesses with branded products. And then we use our financial and regulatory expertise to scale them up. So uh, Swell, our processing unit in Oregon, we're expanding into Nevada in Q1. Uh, we've tripled the production capacity from 90,000 grams of oil a month to 300,000 grams of oil a month, which if you do the math is a lot of vape pens. Uh, it's a very profitable business. So we're targeting uh, 100 million Canadian top line revenue for 2019, and that will spin up uh, 30 to 35 million uh, of EBITDA. Wow. Sounds like you got it. Uh, you got it all planned out there. Um, how is the market in Oregon in terms of like we hear that in some cases, uh, Oregon and Washington are sort of suffering from an oversupply of product that is negatively impacting impacting the prices that producers can realize from their products. Is that is that something that's a challenge for you there? Uh, not really. We're a vertically integrated company and we're branded. So uh, we don't sell generic wholesale cannabis and we don't sell generic vape. Uh, we do do some white labeling for uh, very prominent brands like Quill and for large retailers. But we're focused on uh, developing our own, own branded consumer products distribution. So we cultivate uh, at a very low cost in Oregon. We process, we brand, and then we distribute. So our products are currently in over 350 to 400 dispensaries across Oregon. Hmm. And on the, re on the retail level, the prices have not fallen at all, really. So if you're vertically integrated, you're capturing very, very healthy margins in Oregon. I always say if Warren Buffett were in the business, he'd be in Oregon. Oh, really? Interesting. Yes. You, you find, you find uh, entrepreneurs and brands. Our, our Phantom brand has existed in Oregon for 10 years. It's a, it's a healthy, organic, live soil, uh, well-known cannabis brand. Uh, we sell a lot of apparel. In fact, worldwide, we get requests for uh, Phantom t-shirts and hats from South Africa and Germany and all over the world. So this is a lifestyle brand, and that's how you make money in this business. You know, the stuff that goes into Red Bull is just three cents of sugar water. So... If you want to connect with a consumer, you do it through brand. Phantom, Swell, Hood Oil, Ecofirma, Silver State. These are some of the finest brands in the United States. And our products currently touch over 100,000 customers a month. Wow, that is impressive. Um, okay, so now tell me about your uh, CBD license in Ukraine. Well, we're, we're interested, obviously, in the European market. Uh, the CBD license is just the first step. It allows us to import raw CBD, to process it into finished CBD products and to export those across the European Union. CBD is currently not regulated as long as the THC content is minimal. Um, we are in discussions with a major consumer packaged goods company in Europe that has thousands of points of sale. And the idea is to leverage our expertise in CBD, in branding and THC, and then to feed into the distribution channels of this major partner. Uh, we expect in the near term uh, in either the Ukraine or Poland to obtain uh, hemp cultivation authority as well as uh, cannabis cultivation authority. Uh, at that time, we'll uh, commence large-scale cultivation and processing uh, uh, operations that will target uh, export into the EU and globally. Okay, interesting. Um, how many shares out on your company? 
there's 46 million shares approximately uh, issued, and uh, we have probably the tightest uh, market cap of any play, you know any substantial player in the, in the sector. Yeah, that's uh, that's very very conservative. Um, so on your $45 million convertible debenture, uh, what were the terms of that? So it's a 10% it's a coupon, it's a two-year debenture, it's convertible at $1.50, and then uh, they have the right to buy half as many additional debentures convertible at $2.25. Uh, we're going to use this uh, funding to expand our operations in Nevada, so we're opening our second dispensary around the 20th of this month. Um, in Fernley, which is next to the Tesla Giga plant. So oh. if Elon Musk wants to buy his weed, he'll have to come to my dispensary. <laughs> uh, and uh, we are uh, going to expand our processing in Nevada, and we're, trip we're, we're initially doubling our cultivation rooms from 17 to 35, and we will start distributing our vape capsules and processed products into the wholesale market in Nevada in Q1. So we're building a substantial business in Nevada. We are currently the number one dispensary every month in the state of Nevada. We serve 40,000 customers a month in Reno. Um, and we're number one, you know, we've been number one pretty much uh, consistently for 36 months. Wow, interesting. Um, so then are you planning to become a multi-state sort of actor in all of the states where you can sell cannabis? Yeah, so we're, our next expansion is targeted for Colorado, where uh, we now have a new governor. So we expect uh, a very favorable uh, regulatory climate in Colorado. We're, in fact, meeting with our uh, planned Colorado partners next week. Um, we have uh, expansion lined up for California, which we're expecting to announce in the next couple of months. Um, we are looking at the East Coast actively, and we will uh, do a deal uh, quite soon on the East Coast. So yes, we, we plan to be in several states and to expand rapidly. Excellent. Okay. Um, so from where you sit, what do you see being the biggest part of your uh, revenue stream, medical or recreational? Well, recreational clearly is the, uh, is the majority of the revenue stream. Uh, we we still uh, have a presence in medical. In each state, the regulatory environment is, of course, very unique. Um, in Nevada, we have a medical section to our dispensary and a recreational section. The medical section has continued, and many customers um, sincerely need good guidance and advice on the medical side. So that still makes up a good 25 to 30 percent of the business in Nevada. Um, in Oregon, uh, the regulations require dispensaries to choose between medical or recreational. Um, the dispensaries all chose to go recreational. Um, there still is a medical aspect to the business, and there are medical products, um, but the bulk of the industry has uh, moved onto the recreational side. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, Robert, that's, uh, that's really interesting. So um, what do you see happening in the United States. We saw Jeff Sessions sort of got his walking papers uh, this week, and we saw two more states go uh, medically, uh, join the medical regime. How soon do you think until the United States becomes federally legal for all cannabis, and by what mechanism? Well, uh, I can assure you several champagne corks were pulled in the industry when Jeff Sessions left. So. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was good for the uh, French wine industry, let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, we saw uh, the stock sell <laughs> off, though. Well, that's, that had nothing to do with Jeff Sessions. I think that has to do with Canadian legalization. There were a lot of investors market timing, and a lot of investors believe the market has taken a pause with legalization, and they're looking for the next catalyst moving forward. Um, the next catalyst is the United States. Um, you know, four years ago when I started uh, looking at this industry to build a business, um, if you'd have told me that the regulatory environment would have changed as fast as it has, I wouldn't have believed you. Um, everything has happened a lot faster than I expected. Uh, we do believe the trend is towards rapid uh, descheduling of cannabis. Um, I believe, given the U.S. political situation, that will be done probably as a rider to, uh, you know, another bill. Um, I don't think it will be 
uh, through any formal process. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do think it's going to happen faster than everyone expects. Um, the current uh, attitude towards risk in the U.S. market has changed incredibly just from 12 months ago. So investors who wouldn't even talk to C21 12 months ago um, now own our shares. Institutions who turned us away 12 months ago are now buying shares. So the appetite for the U.S. Uh, industry and, and the cannabis sector in the U.S. Um, is growing uh, daily, and mm. there's intense interest. Uh, California on its own is a far bigger market than the entire Canadian market. And when you look at uh, the businesses, you have, uh, relatively speaking, much more advanced businesses. You, you know, we have several brands that touch 100,000 consumers a month. The, the Canadian companies have no brands, and they don't touch any consumers directly. So. In the United States, you actually have proven brands with uh, authenticity to them that are scalable. So our Phantom brand, which is 10 years old, is a lifestyle brand. We can take that brand to Nevada. We can take it to California. We can take it to Colorado. So while you can't export product, you can scale a business and you can scale intellectual property and you can take your team, your brain trust, and you can uh, utilize that over multiple states. Okay. Great, Robert. Well, that's interesting. We'll come back to you in a quarter's time and see how you're making out. Thanks for your participation today. Thanks a lot. And uh, I appreciate you giving us the time. And uh, I hope some of your listeners will take a look at C21. Thanks a lot. You bet. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye-bye.